right? So you know how, like, right at university, it's kind of like an informal education style. But would you say it, it falls, when you do, like, your talks and pubs and stuff, would you say it sometimes falls into, like, formal education and it's in, in the style? Not, like, necessarily the topic, but the style. It's, uh... I've come to see it as a practical philosophy of education, which will serve serve me whenever I call on it. So the more I invest, uh, the more I get out of it. The more diverse the activities. So anything that's going on in the institutions is fair new. Okay. I just consider it belonging to us all. So whether it's a formal lecture style, which is quite traditional, you get uh, people uh, speaking a lot of their, their thoughts and then taking questions and answers, it's an easy thing to do. But I also do a lot of uh, meeting people for a coffee. Yeah. I'm going, okay, can we have a chat and can I make a podcast? Uh, can you take me through A, B, and C? Um, if whatever best suits the individual, and I find um, as the primary coordinator of what, what could be viewed as the formal project, because I do most in, in it, I get the most out of it. Uh, but other people, you know, there was a guy who did uh, six six talks, uh, six workshops um, last year in uh, a local nightclub on, on behavioural modelling. Um, they were great. Uh, and I, I, I don't think it's wise to be prescriptive. Uh, and I think my role is more being like a janitor. Okay. So if you wanted to share something, the first thing would be, all right, well, can I buy you a coffee? Let's talk about it. Tell me a bit about what you, you want to share. And then I'd work out how could you afford you share. Uh, right, okay, well, we, uh, I want to take people up the hill. Okay, yeah. Uh, do you want me to bring coffee, sandwiches? Yeah, yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> uh, maps, are we going to do it? No, it? It's being adaptive to the circumstances. Does, does that answer you? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm with you now, yeah. So it's, it's, um, you try not to give it like a formal label, like a formal, formal education. It's just, it's just there. It just is what it is, kind of thing. Yeah? Yeah. I'm it's my like it's it is often, uh, right, why, why would you uh, hire a plumber and then tell them what to do? <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to do that, eh? That's <laughs> interesting. Why would you, you know, get a brain surgeon and go, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. It is about learning from the other person and actively listening and me adapting, uh, using all my abilities to adapt to support them. Okay, oh yeah. Okay, cool. <clears throat> um, would you say that the Ragged University is learning off another person in, in not even just an informal manner, but like in any manner? Like, in, so it can be applied to day to day life? Because um, what I'm thinking is some people may be like, Using the concepts of Ragged Rag University, but without even realizing it. Say, for example, say if you're like, say if I was teaching Harry how to play a video game, and we're just chilling out, and I'll be causing this, and this, and this. Would that be using the concepts of Ragged University that I'm learning? Absolutely. The, you know, it, it comes, it, it, it's speaking, recognizing that learning ha is diffuse. It's happening all around us and throughout all of our lives all of the time. And uh, as a practical philosophy, you know, this, this discrete project, or whatever anybody wants to do wherever they are in the world, oh, well, I want to do something. It, 
you know, you can use it to focus what we do naturally. Yeah. Someone said, um, Alexandria uh, Ocasio-Cortez, who's made quite a name for us that recently, um, uh, there was an incident where two kids were playing a game on, uh, and they were streaming it on Twitch, and, and she got on Twitch and played, played with them. Um, and, and nobody really understood what was happening apart from what she knew what was happening. And it was just it was a, it was a way of making contact. It was a way of actually talking to people in their own environment. And um, so it's more of an education. I think this is this is communication. This is the way we live. This is the way we, we understand each other. Boiling things down to what is something X, Y, or Z uh, is is problematic. Like uh, we we're, we're 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 so trained to do that. Um, um, and uh, there was a guy, um, but um, there, there's an Ar Aristotle who has shaped a lot of the way we think, suggested everything has a soul, an essence, and it's singular and it describes people. And uh, Korzybski, Alfred Korzybski, spoke about the, uh, wrote something about the general theory of semantics, saying that this is nonsense. We are many things. So, uh, whilst I am cooking, I am a chef. Whilst I am walking, I am a walker. Whilst I am you know, doing you know, dancing, I am a dancer. So I, I am many things. So these singular labels of what education is are, are fairly redundant. To, uh, they, don't, they don't represent a whole. Um, education is a process which will, will serve what needs to be put it to. Uh, Anything else, comrades? Kids? <laughs> Any of you fancy giving a talk at a, a ragged event? <laughs> Actually, Angie and I discussed this as an idea. We We're not doing it, by the way. We're no. not doing it. I'm excited. We've never got that past that event. And I actually, I actually sounded it out with Alex, and he said, yeah, yeah, we can look at that. We, we actually kicked around the idea of, of your kind of assessment culminating in a, a, a ragged presentation at a pub in Liverpool. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we we, 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 we thought it was maybe just a step too far. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 so just out of interest, we're not in one room, but would you have said that? Yeah, I would have gone. Yeah, yeah. towards the final grade, then yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there were like extra marks, actually, yeah. Who's <laughs> <laughs> <Just, laughs> not sure that they want to see that? Well, my question is, are we doing it? Come <laughs> 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 talk, it's great, isn't it? You're talking about one thing at one moment, and before you know it, you're into politics, and then you're into yeah. history, and it's just and it's just sort of allowing your sort of mind to wander. You might have sounds really sort of, but we're just talking about the meaning of life. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, that's some of the best conversations take place in, in those kinds of environments. It's funny you should say this. So we've been talking about um, there's an archive in this university. Uh, a man called Stafford Beer, who was a, who was a, a management consultant um, with um, some very interesting ideas. And the most ambitious thing that he did was he worked with the Marxist government of Chile in 1971 to um, create a socialist decentralized economy. With, um, with very rudimentary technology, it's an extraordinary thing, and then the CIA blew it up. 
Long story. Anyway, um, he wrote a book called The Heart of Enterprise, where he tries to, he, well, he does explain his ideas, he explains his models, and he introduces, but each chapter is, so you get a chapter of theory, and there are lots of diagrams, but he knows that that isn't the thing where it happens, that isn't where the understanding happens. So each chapter has got has, has another chapter, which is called Later at the Bar. And that's where everybody goes and gets drunk and is talking about what the hell was that all about? <laughs> and he just writes these conversations as in, what the hell was that all about? And, and of course, that's the best thing in the book. It's, it's exactly what you said, those are the pub conversations. Um, because that's where the truth comes out. Yeah. It's not in the formal thing, it's in the informal thing. Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask everybody in the room, can you all think about a, a situation in your life, you don't have to tell me, where somebody in your life, family or friends, have sat and taught you something? Can anybody not remember a situation like that? No. 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 My dad taught me a bit of dentistry using a pig's head on our lip on our dining room Oh, that was an interesting one. Brilliant. <laughs> Chaos theory in action. Who ever would predict it? <laughs> I'm so glad you decided to be an educator. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Sorry, sorry. Fascinating, yeah? Pigs' teeth are quite similar to humans. So, a lot of dentists practice on pigs. Yeah. So, like, practice yeah, like yeah, removing balls and implants and stuff. You haven't met any Just you know, just because I'm curious, you know, we would get women in the same gallery and do your work around uh, museum education and you know, public education. The university's always going, oh, you know, use public funds for research and must share with the public. State employed the same in the world. Where does your book? You know, how would you see your working relations from right at university and yet you're in a formal-ish or a cultural place? Um, doing carrying education. Yeah. I think it falls somewhere between, it's not quite as liberal as, as the right university, it's not quite as free and as open. Mm-hmm. But I think it would be a space that would allow something like that to work. I think a museum is a perfect space for something like that to happen for those discussions. They've, they've got so many um, trigger points, so mm-hmm. many things in museums, and they're also, especially in the pool, so many different collections and different buildings. That mm-hmm. and, and it, it's happened when we've had like, um, so we host a day of talks for um, Dada Fest, mm-hmm. so like the, um, Death and Disabled Arts, and they'll come in and to talk about one thing that brochure advertises this one particular thing and because it's hosted in the museum something's been spotted by someone on the way in yeah. and they say oh, actually I want to talk about this still in relation to Dada I'm going to talk about this now yeah, yeah, yeah. so I think even though it's, it's prescripted slightly and the, the collections are limited we, there's only yeah. so many things in the museum yeah. that we can talk about or in the art gallery that, that is shown in the art the trigger points for much wider discussions, for social discussions and cultural yeah. discussions and all that kind of thing. So I uh, was minded of some of the themes around space and uh, um, the Matisse cutouts. Yeah, these are the layering that we talked about two weeks ago. A lot of you drew those. So, and, well, I like, you know, space, educated space and what that means. And, um, so I'm interested if you're doing, yeah, right, you know, at some point, might make it happen. It might be so great to do a funny talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do we'll another yeah. ministry of silly talks. Yeah. 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 This is very important. How do we reclaim the yeah. space yeah, of our world? Uh, and 
uh, of course, people I've, I've found in, in museums are overwhelmingly sort of going, hey, come in, yeah. it's yours. You know, yeah. same with libraries. And, and they're not done they in Liverpool anyway. Museums and libraries are chock it. Oh. Yeah, I think especially for the, for the National Museums of Liverpool, we've got a new director quite recently, and she is far more interested in making it um, the community's gallery rather than it was. It was very protective, and it for a long time under the last director, it was this is ours, and you can look out. We'll let you see it, but don't touch it and don't do anything to it. Whereas our new director is very interested in making sure that everyone in the community. So we've done we did uh, we've done days where the museum was. Um, they, they brought um, a massive group of, of, of Muslim people in from the community and they did their, their prayer in the atrium. So there was like nearly 100 Muslim people in the atrium doing their prayer and they had like um, a big open and letting the, the education space was just tables full of different people, not not professionals, not experts, not academics, just a Muslim lady from down the road wanted to teach her how to make this thing that she'd made at home, this food that she'd made at home. It's just it's, it's become a space for ordinary people. So why can't the university like that? We do stuff like that here. Okay. We do have a strong relationship with the change. Students go yeah. to learn in the uni. I don't yeah. know if any of you've done that with Naomi or yeah, maybe on ECF, but we'll be going to the yeah. um, same with Gallery. But it is interesting though, because we do tend to sort of lock up an awful lot of what the university does. So the, the giant chemistry lecture with 300 students, we, we really try and keep any, anybody else out of that. Increasingly um, so. And and I think there's probably a reason for that. Do you do stuff in Liverpool? Do you go and you see the the city as your learning space? Um, some people do. Um, no, it's, it's kind of it's the aim. No, it's a bit kind of um, yeah, it's ours. This is exactly what you were saying about the museum. It's, it's, yeah. it's been, there, there is because the university has to create a distinction between itself and its own world yeah. and the outside world because it's it's got this market value to maintain. Yeah. And um, I think there's an anxiety that if you actually open up more of what it does, people will see actually that's that boring. Why would I want to that? I think there is there is a problem. Yeah, it kind of perpetuates the mystique. Mm. Yeah. I'm curious to know about it. Would you use spaces, you know, if you're teaching or know some of your clubs and things? What would put you off in the future? Or what would be a facility for? What we work in a different space? Yeah. Ethics. Yeah. Yeah. So we have to deal with that too. Yeah. It'd be nice to be like, <laughs> <laughs> what can we do? <laughs> yeah. yeah. like, we have an outdoor building. We have to make it come outside, even when I was in high school, yeah. and everybody used to look for us. Yeah. Side yeah. school, as Dan mentioned, about you know, the community mm. and all the mm. stuff you were looking at, how you can just teach in a growth mindset. It's really good fun. The, the dead bunny in the classroom, isn't it? To get that fun. Susan and I said, learn and how to do dentistry from a big side. <laughs> it's got a tradition in educational thinking. I think it's important to do it in different settings in different ways. So mm-hmm. that it just becomes so rigorous and, yeah. like you said, it's more about like, different skills rather than just mm-hmm. setting yeah. one car through. And it's like, sometimes I get scared to say things in this setting because I feel like people might judge me, whereas if I was somewhere else, it would be like that. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. And then there's the space, isn't it? And how should you change the space? Yes. Should someone say like making this all white or you know, this is our space and you can't knock the wall down quite yet. But I have done that as a primary teacher, senior teacher, in a big Victorian building. Very good house and then very kept. And uh, caretaker said, yeah, have a big jump home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, really? Well, right. he's not just an old up the upstairs. <laughs> and then we had a huge space. Well, we had a huge space there, but we didn't want to no. But, you know, so I guess it's about thinking about as well, like, and sorry, I'm having to know now. Oh, oh, oh. I'm sorry. I'm saying about when you have you there, it's also when if you 
being transformed to in your own practice or your own thinking or in your own life. Kind of like see where those spaces for change are that we talked about in our first session. Can I ask you a more personal question? Yeah. If you don't, if you don't like talking in spaces like this, do you think that, that there's something that happened in your educational history that put you off? Um, and is this space too similar to what happened? To you? I'm not sure so specifically to, to me, but like I think for everyone, I mm-hmm. like the whole idea of competition. Like being, I don't get any star, and it's just like, yeah, I don't think it's any mine, I don't think it's just a particular way. So, if you change the space, then at least you do something to change the dynamic which makes you think that there's that working behind the scenes. I think it kind of takes away like the hierarchy of power, yes. yeah. and then you know, like the yeah, I, I think, you know, that, that, that's the key point, that pretty much the entirety of the formal education system is based on judgment yeah. and yeah. making yeah. a judgment and making people feel judged, yeah. you know, as compared to a, a scale of yeah. success. Whereas if you, I know we can't yet yeah. fully do away with that, but we, we can do things which hopefully we do in this module to kind of make it melt into the background a little bit, so, so to, to encourage collaboration and sharing and, and, a, and a kind of authentic exchange of ideas. We, we create failure in these spaces. These spaces have to create failure, yeah, in order to survive. Mm-hmm. It's mad, it's mad, but that's what, that's what happens. So, something I've found really interesting is the the relationship I now have with the place I grew up with in it's totally different. Mm-hmm. Like I know so many more people, and through meeting so many people, uh, my my social anxieties have have massively gone down because of I found on whole people are actually quite lovely. Yeah, quite nice. Want other people to succeed. Yeah. Curious, interesting, um, and, and the age range. Right. At, at one point, my friends were my peer group. Were all the similar age. Now <laughs> it's massive. You know, uh, from from in in nineties. Uh, you know, to youngsters, uh, you know, there, there is no defining characteristic. And I think that intergenerational thing has been really important for me because I've started to understand more about the, the world. There, there are people I can call on and go, I don't understand this. Do you? Like, uh, one, one guy turned up. Face like them, you know, like what the fuck, you know, like this doing. <laughs> yeah, I was like, it's fine, no, uh, don't do this name tag thing. Everybody tell your name, sign it, you know, give me your details. Um, which is lethal for funders because they go, well, there's no outcome then. <laughs> Um, but then, you know, next, next week he, you know, he came back, he was relaxed, he was, came back again, he was smiling, came back again and he brought his wife, came back again and brought flapjacks, he was like, can I, can I do a talk? And I'm like, yeah, of course you can, Colin. He, he wrote down details. I read it, I was like, holy shit. <laughs> this guy had been in charge of education in Scotland. <clears throat> and, and he talked about... <laughs> no one was suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> he talked about what, what being in the civil service meant to him. And that so fundamentally changed my view of the world and ultimately how I engaged you know, with people in officially you know, professional positions. Uh, because I just now realised people are just trying to get on 
in a fairly chaotic world. And a civil servant, so care about what they do. Yeah. So I'm, I'm interested to know about the. Does anybody here have a friend that's say twenty years older than you? One, two, three. I certainly have. I know it's hard to believe that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, when, you, when you all think about the, the demographic range of who you know, do you think it's diverse? And one of the things I, I started to think about was getting out of my own patterns. And you can think about that in a geography, like rather than owning a space, mm -hmm. uh, moving, you know, going, like we're doing a bookshop this week, in a nightclub this week, in a, in a, a church hall this week, up a hill this week. Some people will go to one but not another. There's some people, some places in the city I've never even been. <coughs> But this sort of created a consciousness in me to explore things that I, that the world fills out. So. Well, if I can see on that point, uh -huh. and so if we can kind of transit to the, the final stage of today. Now, what I want to flag up, or I'd like you to consider, have a think about. So when you're putting together your provocations slash artifact, whatever you want to call it, your responses uh, to the thought processes, um, have a think about the kind of the, the range of concepts that we've had a smattering of so far. Uh, now, now, do remember that what we're not after with this is, a, is in a sense, an accurate definition of what these concepts are, what I'm going to use, use them as catalysts or springboards or reference points to articulate elements of whatever it is that you want to articulate. So, so have a think about, you know, stuff we've covered in relation to expressionism, you know, just a quick flurry uh, of getting a, a thought down, an idea as quickly and as crudely uh, as possible. It's not about accuracy, it's not about being sort of robust and perfect, it's about just, just, just getting a, a thought out of there. Uh, the death of the author, which I've covered yet, but I will, I will cover it in subsequent weeks, in a nutshell, that basically means that uh, yeah, to read this. So I can read an excerpt from there, you can read an excerpt from there. What I take from it is fundamentally different to what you take from it. Who's right? Well, we're, we're both right. You know, because we both got very different reference points. You know, th these are just hieroglyphs, these are just shapes on a page. And the way that we make sense of these is, is, is very creatively. Uh, and again, it's, so it's a move away from the, the idea of a kind of central system of an expert who's correct and their definition stands and everybody else's interpretation is inferior because it's wrong. No, no, it's a move away from that. So that's what the death of the author, Roland Barthes, the function, an immediate flood of emotion, transformatory anticipation uh, deriving from a piece of culture. Derive, which picking up on the point that Alex, Alex was making there about wandering around the city. You know, you, to derive is to wander and purposefully get lost with the intention of discovering something new. Now, so that could, you can apply that in a physical environment, you can apply it in a mental environment as well, to read one, to, 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 to move away from established routine and the, the beaten track. The tournament, to hijack culture and to give it a new definition, a creative reinterpretation. Um, again, the idea of utopia and not yet. You don't have to use any of those if you don't want, but I'd, I'd, I'd like to start to consider these. I know you said the term, it's like the <clears throat> hijacking of culture. Yeah. But you say it's kind of like, it's the hijacking of someone's perception of something. So you got a regular university thinking you know something about race. 
but then someone's actually given a talk and it completely changes your sort of view or thought process was about or something like that. Because you say that would be determinant. And the, yeah, determinant is more about what you do then do with that. So so the knowledge that you believe you can then take that in a different direction. Okay. Oh right, okay. Yeah. So if it was like about bricklaying. I could I turn the information that I'd go and I'd start laying my bricks differently. Exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah. So so you kind of taking learning from what already already exists and doing something new with it. Right. Yeah. It's a detour. Hijack. Detour. So, 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 oh. Okay. Move in a different direction. Uh, yeah, and, and then you know, also in relation to, and Alex is talking to a lot of this today, the creativity, transformation, imagination, freedom, inspiration, discovery, so on and so forth. So these are the, so up to this point, the developing array of concepts and ideas. So when we, when Andrew and I kind of distribute with it, we're going to go for the uh, sticky wall thing sheet yeah. today. Uh, so you, you can, and again, it looks like the, the room across is free, so you, you can you can spread out if you want to. Kind of side door and side door. Right? Do we need to be in the same group so you can have to be Yes. Yeah, that's, that's the word. Yeah. Sorry to that's bring the idea. Yeah. Sorry to bring an element of control into this, but that, that's, the way, that? that's the way we spreadsheet is set up. I know. So. <laughs> 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 Why would it matter to the spreadsheet? Stop spoiling my pretend I didn't. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Does every group has given rise? A response to another set of people? Actually, yeah. If me and Karen got 70, would my have went with just this week and got 60 because I'd still be getting a matter We can work around that. Yeah, because on the, on the front of the sheets, which will give the new sheets out, as long as you clearly identify who, who, the, who the group members are. Yeah, yeah, so you, you can mix and match, absolutely. That would probably end the slip. <laughs> the option is there at least. Alex, you know, so we know Alex. Sorry, because I'm the only one who's Right, okay then, so. Yes. 